Hello, hello everyone. First of all, the American cruiser split has gone through completely. Everyone has got their Woosters and people seem to be adapting to this split quite well. However, what I have noticed is that people are really struggling with how to play these heavy American cruisers. In general, heavy cruisers are not that easy to play, but especially these heavy American cruisers, people seem to struggle a lot with them. So I figured I'd return to the Pensacola, which has been moved down to tier six, and uh, basically show kind of how you're supposed to be playing the ship. First of all, sneak into the middle, or, well, middle is usually quite risky for a cruiser. Ideally though, you want to be an ambush predator on this ship. I shoot before the Nuremberg comes around the corner, so I'm still undetected while he's popping out. He has no warning, nothing to tip him off except the shells landing on him and scoring a double citadel on him. Now, the second time I shoot, I will naturally be detected. So at this point, you already have to be angling. You have to be ready to turn away. And most importantly, any sort of play involving heavy cruisers, I highly, highly recommend priority target because it makes it so much safer to play in the open like this because you have that warning you have that number that pops up when someone is targeting you and it's invaluable for knowing just how aggressive and how free you can play in the open now the way heavy cruisers set themselves apart from light cruisers is mostly the guns there are some difference in uh, usually heavy cruisers get a bit more health a bit more armor but they also tend to get a larger citadel in return so it's not always the most perfect of trades in this case though the way light cruisers can hide behind islands and they can focus because they focus mostly on he and with ifhe they can easily oh i, I love pensacola ip man i love pensacola ip uh, they can hide behind islands oh he got undetected switch to the next cruiser and this is kind of what i mean with this opportuni opportunistic gameplay that i've been talking about anytime you see a cruiser get broadside that heavy 203 millimeter ap so so punishing and that's another two citadels and i mean we, we've scored seven we're, we're what Four, barely four minutes into the game and we got seven, seven citadels. That is the power of these AP shells. Anyways, what I was saying, the difference between heavy and light cruisers is that light cruisers get away with hiding behind islands and just spamming HE because, well, they have IFHE and their strength is raw DPM. That's kind of their thing. They deal a lot of consistent damage, especially with IFHE and their AP in general is quite lackluster. So, Getting a safe position behind an island, just spamming HE is a perfectly viable way of playing that that kind of ship. But a ship like Pensacola, for example, has such a long reload on the guns that there's absolutely no point in trying to play that way because, well, you, you will greatly be gimping yourself. You will not be able to bring the guns to bear because what you want to do is catch people by surprise. You want to catch their broadsides by surprise and you want to get this, use this heavy AP. As you can see, even though my initial sailing pattern was quite risky with the help of priority target and just keep constantly keep making sure that I can't be ambushed, uh, I still managed to cripple three different cruisers. I crippled the Nuremberg, the Ioba, and the Kirov. All of them are like, <laughs> all of them are kind of screwed at this point. They've lost so much of their health, and especially at lower tiers where there's no heal to regen this health, this is extremely powerful. Normandy pigs out, so we switch to HE. I mean, you, you still have you're still a cruiser. Your HE is still quite consistently strong. Now, I actually have absolutely horrendously bad RNG this game. Um, these shells, I'm running a demolition expert, so these shells actually actually have a 16% fire chance, but my RNG is uh, completely monstrously horrendous this game, and I pretty much end up getting no fires at all. But such things happen, and I mean, in a way, it makes it a good commentary, because um, there's no real favorable RNG affecting the result. In fact, I have extremely unfavorable RNG, not getting any fires, and that in return makes, of course, all the results um, much more convincing. Still though, with the heavy cruisers, your gameplay will always be about sneaking around, sneaking, getting these ambush shots, surprising people with your AP, and trying to catch them off guard. You don't want to be tanking in the open. That's something a lot of people do when they see heavy cruiser. They think, oh, I'm going to play aggressive. I'm going to go nose in and tank them. No, 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 no. Um, the Pensacola, for example, has 19 millimeter deck and upper belt armor. 19 millimeter. That means even 283 millimeter guns overmatch your armor. So that's <laughs> that's Graf Spee. 
Uh, and uh, I mean, battleships, of course, have absolutely no issues overmatching your armor. So you do you want to play safe? And the, one of the biggest, the biggest guides, the biggest suggestions I give to any any new players when they're starting out cruisers is rather play safe than too aggressive. Get used to what you can and what you can't do. I finally got my first fire, by the way. <laughs> I don't know how many HE shells it took. Popping defensive AA, of course, to help my Makarov here, so, since he's being dropped. Um, in general, light the light cruisers tend to get better AA than the heavy cruisers as well, but especially the American heavy cruisers do have quite good anti-air. Sadly, though, I'm not particularly spec for it since I don't have AFT or anything, since this is just a 12-point captain, since uh, this is on the Russian server, and my chat wanted me to level the heavy cruisers, so that's why uh, I had to start a completely new captain. Aroldo... Keeping and constantly keeping yourself angled is one of the keynotes to always keep in mind in Pensacola. Um, whenever there's a chance that I might get shot from two different angles, I tend to disengage. In fact, I also like to stay at fairly long range, never really getting too close because I want to be able to use my concealment. And this is very important, the ability to, the ability to use your concealment to disengage. Now, 12.1 km concealment on the Pensacola isn't exactly that impressive, um, but using trying to keep my targets between that 12 and 15 means that i am comfortably within range to always bring my guns to bear but at the same time i'm also comfortably uh far away to be able to disengage when the need strikes the pensacola is one of my favorite example cruisers though because it is so notoriously punishing to any bad place like going from the Omaha to the Pensacola is is a pretty horrendous wake-up call because um, the Pensacola well it has these guns it, re it rewards good aim it rewards good predictions and so forth um, it's also a monumentally punishing ship for any sort of mistakes you have to be so so careful with your, with your angling at all times and because of that thin armor even if you don't make mistakes you can still get punished quite heavily now, for example here, I tunnel vision a bit too much trying to finish off this Aoba. You note that I'm giving a bit too much broadside as I want to shoot this. There is the Normandy and we can see from priority target that he is in fact targeting me. I'm greedy to shoot this Pensacola before I turn away though. And I start turning away, but it's too late. I shouldn't have been this greedy. And the punishment that comes from this kind of... It seems like a small misplay. I'm, I'm already quite angled, but not angled enough. The Citadel armor is only 76 millimeters. So something like a Normande has absolutely no issues of penetrating it. And we went from being pretty much full HP and quite comfortable to down to 12,000 health. And that's kind of... That's a key example of just how extremely punishing the Pensacola is. Uh, and that's why so many people struggle with it. Because that was one... Not even... It was a small mistake, but it was still a, like a broadside mistake. And I, I thought that this commentary was so good because it showed what happened as soon as you make one of those mistakes. As soon as you get a bit too greedy with your AP, you want the, you want that damage a bit more, and the trade-off is horrible. You're sure I got some decent volleys off, but losing almost all my health in return is obviously a horrible trade. And the Pensacola really forces you to evaluate these trades. Is it worth bringing all my guns to bear? if the cost that I'm gonna be paying for it is practically my life. And this is this is so important. Constantly, of course, keeping track of that Normandy with priority target, we know that he's aiming at me. So we all constantly shift our camera to look his way to see that he's aiming at us. And whenever we see him aiming, shooting, we turn away to angle to mitigate this effect. And meanwhile, I'm of course harassing this enemy Pensacola because, well, he is capping and that will greatly benefit my team. Not to mention the AP is so very strong and... oh. That was a miss. He dodged away. Once again, we still see priority target is showing two numbers. That means the Normandy is probably still aiming at us. Are there any shells in there? Yes, they are. We're turning away. We still eat one over pen, but it's not the end of the world. Now, though, the Normandy has kind of backed off. An important thing to note here is the reason why I backed off uh, from the C cap was that I was being flanked. The Normandy, who was going towards B, was getting my broadside while I tried to fight the Pensacola. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you are unable to avoid the crossfire, you, you should disengage. Don't try to brute force any fights, especially in a ship like the Pensacola. Don't try to brute force any crossfire fights. Because your large citadel and your weak uh, uh, belt armor means that you will almost always end up 
being punished very heavily for it. It's safer to disengage, let the situation evolve, like now the Normandy is dealing with other stuff, the Normandy is fighting um, some stuff in B, and now we re-engage with the battle. We still keep an eye out on priority target though. Keep in mind, this is why we run priority target. We catch the Pensacola by surprise. Oh, two people targeting me. Angle away. It might be the Normandy aiming us, it might be the New York, we don't know, we're angling away from both of them. Just to make sure that if there's some AP coming in from the Normandy at this point, we are angled. And this is so, so important and something to always keep, keep in mind. You have to maintain your angling at all times. This is why I love the Pensacola, but this is why I also consider the Pensacola one of the roughest introductions to a heavy cruiser line in the game. Because you go from comfortable... Omaha HE spamming to this incredibly positional and aim rewarding ship that is one of the harder cruisers in the game to play. It's extremely rewarding when you get it right, but it's also extremely punishing if it gets if it goes wrong. That New York, that's Hansi actually grounded. Now, once again, the 203 mm AP is quite strong. Quite strong against the uh, these um, broadsides armor, but once again, 16% fire chance. I should be getting some fires, but I did mention that this game I have some of the most horrendous fire RNG I've probably ever seen. Considering I'm shooting 10 shells at a time and every single shell has a 16% fire chance, um, you understand that not getting any fires in these volleys is actually quite absurd. It's horrible RNG. But these things happen and ultimately this game wasn't so much about burning down targets, even though of course that would have given me significantly more damage. It was more about always, always keeping track of where your broadsides are pointing and where your broadsides are showing. And People often say that positioning in a battleship requires a lot of uh, planning ahead, but I would say a cruiser, especially a heavy cruiser, requires it even more, especially a cruiser like the Pensacola, because your concealment is very, very iffy at 12 kilometers, and always keeping track of your broadsides and trying to find these opportunist, opportunistic targets at the same time, it's a rough experience. I finally got a second fire and an instantly damaged combat, so <laughs> that was my second fire this entire game. I've gotten a total of two fires this game. <laughs> no comment, man. No comment. It looks like he's going to die before he gets that volley off. Will I actually get the kill? Nope. No such luck. The game does end. And ultimately, though, I mean, I would say it was a good game. 129k damage in a Pensacola is always nice. 11 citadels. But a large percentage of the citadels came in the early game. And... More importantly than anything, I think the positional play this game was what's worth highlighting. Um, and of course, the second I made a mistake, it was so obviously pointed out by the Normandy. I make a mistake, I give too much broadside, instant punishment, almost all health gone. And that's why I love the Pensacola. But that's why I always can also consider the Pensacola a very, very rough ship to deal with or to learn. Um, Captain build wise, I won't bother showing it. It's I, I will run very much very similar builds for uh, these American heavy cruisers, and that's uh, module wise. You go from for turret survival, rudder survival, um, AA range, and faster rudder shift. And Captain perks wise, you go for priority target, adrenaline rush, demo expert, and concealment expert. And then from there on, you build into expert marksman for the Pensacola. You don't really need it for the later ships. And uh, expert loader is also extremely valuable. But that is the very simplified Captain build. Uh, team score wise, 2000 base XP. Not really that much. I didn't get many plane kills because he didn't really send many planes my way. But ultimately, we only got one kill. Detailed report wise is actually quite amusing when we f when we realized that I shot 92 HE shells and almost all of these HE shells were against targets that didn't have a fire burning uh, and I only ended up getting a total of two fires for less than 8,000 damage. But we still managed to get a raw 87,000 damage from the AP and if that doesn't highlight the difference between a heavy and a light cruiser, I don't know what does, because that raw AP damage that really shows just what these 203mm guns can do and just what kind of impact you can have on the match with them. Anyway, this was a small example of the Pensacola and how to play it. I'll probably be featuring the New Orleans and the follow-up cruisers as well, since this is something people have been requesting from me for quite some time. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to you later.